This is an extract from the Leader podcast by The Evening Standard, hosted by me, David Marsland. To hear the whole thing, search for us on your podcast provider. We can both uh, observe social distancing and meet as an entire cabinet face to face, which I'm sure you'll agree is the right thing to do. In a move seen to encourage people back to the office, Boris Johnson assembled his first face-to-face cabinet meeting since spring. Familiar measures to stop the spread of COVID-19 were in place, social distancing and hand sanitizer, but just days before face masks become mandatory in shops, there was no obligation for ministers to wear them at the session. The Prime Minister has stopped short of saying face coverings need to be worn in the office. But Director of Oxford University's Leverhulme Centre for Demographic Science says this confusing messaging could lead to a second spike in the UK. Okay. Melinda, since the start of the pandemic, there's been very different answers on this. So do face masks work? So, I mean, directly in answer to your question, yes, uh, face masks and coverings do work. They protect uh, the person that's wearing them. So not entirely, but there is evidence that they have protect the person, but there's also evidence that they protect those around you. So it's becoming increasingly clear that if you have a well-constructed cloth face covering, so that's different from a surgical mask. So um, there's a difference between surgical masks, respirators, these N95 respirators, and face coverings, so cloth masks. So if you have a high quality one that's that's cotton, it's multi-layered, it's well-constructed, yes, that will definitely protect others. They've been shown um, to have about an 80 to 95% filtration. So if you cough or sing or, you know, (laughs) emit anything, it should filter out the virus. Could not wearing them as we come out of lockdown lead to a second spike? Yeah, so um, actually the head of the Center for Disease Control in the United States came out saying that non-pharmaceutical interventions are actually wearing face masks, so to prevent the transmission of the virus. And face coverings and masks shouldn't be seen independently. You know, the Center for Disease Control said if, you know, he could get everyone in the U.S. um, wearing face masks and coverings, he predicted that they could get the virus under control within four to eight weeks. So, you know, there's really mounting evidence that this is important. Other countries in Europe have been quick to adopt them, even though it wasn't previously part of their culture. Why has the UK lagged on this? Yeah, it's a good question. And I think the reason is that the policy, you know, the national policies were just made really, really clear to people that they should wear um, face coverings. And more importantly, you know, in the research we did, is that um, you have to understand the behavioral factors behind this. So it's not just a medical issue, it's about behavioral issues. So people have to understand why they're wearing face masks and coverings. So they have to understand how the virus works, but that masks protect them and protect others. And I think what's really important is people have to understand the sort of barriers about them too. So here, I think in the UK, it was initially mixed uh, with messages about PPE shortages. So people thought, you know, it was their civic duty not to wear masks. And I think the government uh, policy has been very, very unclear. Uh, The WHO also changed its policy between April and June, so that didn't help. And when the public receives mixed messages or really unclear messages, um, then they get an information overload, but they tend to disengage and and just not believe the evidence anymore. Because we've been told now to wear them in shops and on public transport, but not in other enclosed spaces such as offices. So what impact does this kind of conflicting messaging have? You know, getting around like why you need to wear them is important. If, if we think about Japan, for example, it just, you know, they engage in really clear messaging. They had the three C's. So avoid closed spaces, avoid crowded places and avoid close contact settings. And if you're in those closed spaces, spaces, crowded places, close contact settings, you know, you should really be wearing a face covering or mask. And then people thought, okay, yeah, so I I can't social distance or I'm in this sort of crowded area, a crowded street, um, I'm in a pub, I'm in a shop, and and then it was clear. And in other countries such as Portugal, for example, um, you know, gave really clear guidance about if you come into a restaurant, you use hand sanitizer. When you walk to your table, you keep your face masks on, you take it off when you're at the table. 
all serving staff should be wearing uh, masks. And, you know, here there's there's just a lot of confusion around it. And people see the inconsistencies. They call them out immediately. <laughs> you know, they say, well, why, you know, why, why is it in supermarkets and shops? And do the shopkeepers have to wear them? And all of these different things that actually, you know, many countries have gone through this before with SARS, um, with MERS and other respiratory diseases. And they've already developed really, you know, clear policy on it. So there's really no need to have unclear policy. Um, if we can clarify to people that wearing face masks and covering is just like hand hygiene or social distancing or quarantining, as long as that's made clear to people, then you can actually, you know, help to mitigate or avoid these um, second, third or, or further outbreaks and spikes. The Asian countries that have experienced uh, SARS and these respiratory outbreaks before, they acted immediately in, in suggesting face uh, coverings. And I think there's a bit of a myth that people won't, won't adopt them because they have in many other countries that had no history of them. And people don't want to stay in lockdown for a long period of time. They want to leave their houses, but they want to feel secure and safe when they're going into businesses and different places. So this gives them that security that they're not transmitting the virus to others, but also it offers some protection for themselves.